Dear students, as I have given you the demonstration on to how to enter the two type of variables that are being ranked into SPSS and how to follow the procedure for Kendall Tower test under SPSS. Now, once you would obtain the output under SPSS, the last thing you need to do is to interpret the result for possible acceptance or rejection of null hypothesis. Now, the problem under hand, that was a, condu a study conducted by Johnson in 1973 and he was interested in finding out the two relationships relating to the Collegiate School of Nursing. One was the extent of agreement for decision making and the other was faculty satisfaction. So, the ranks on the two variables that were being assigned for the 12 institutions who have participated in the study, they were being shown. Further, we were interested in testing the at 1% level of significance that the two variables are inversely related to each other. Now, once we have followed the required procedure under Kendall's Tower test, this is the output which is being shown to you. Under the correlation coefficient, the value comes out to be negative. As you know that the Kendall's Tower test can take on the value between minus 1 and positive 1. So, this minus 1 value is actually indicating that it is expected that there is an inverse relationship between the two type of variables x and y. As far as the p-value is being concerned, it is insignificant. So, students, it is not just the correlation coefficient value that is somehow important. It is a p-value, which is a probability of extreme. So, we would rely on to this p-value in order to reject or accept our null process, although the correlation coefficient under Kendall's Tower is directing us to the decision that uh, it might be the case that when X and Y are somewhat negatively related. But final decision would be based on to the p-value, which is 0 0.312 in this case. So step number one would be that under H0, we have that X and Y are independent. Whereas under H1, we have that tau is less than zero. That means X and Y are inversely related. Under step two, level of significance, alpha is 0 0.01. Step three is test statistic. And under step four, the p-value is being calculated as 0 0.312. Now, students, this p-value is being calculated for the two-tailed test. As you have observed, that we have followed the Candles Tower test procedure. And we have selected the option of two-tailed test. So, now, what we would have to do as we are talking about one tail test, because our alternative hypothesis is directing us to the left side of the distribution. So, we are required to divide this p value by 2 in order to get the one tail p value. So, the next step we need to take up is the critical region. And our critical region would be formulated, which is based on the p value in this case, because uh, SPSS is giving us the p value as well. So, we would have to reject our H0 if our p-value is less than alpha and our alpha was 0 0.05. So, after dividing the p-value by 2, I've got the p-value for one tailed. Uh, now, students, uh, why I've divided with 2? Because the p-value that we have uh, observed under output, that was for two tailed. But under H1, uh, we were required the one tailed p-value. So, I've divided it with 2 in order to get the one-tailed p-value. So, this value comes out to be 0.156 now and now this is the p-value for a one-tailed test. And as you can see, that 0.156 is much more greater than our alpha 0 0.05. So, it does not actually fall in a critical region. So, H0 will be accepted and we can conclude that extent of agreement on the responsibilities for decision making and faculty satisfaction, they are independent of each other.